the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Straight ahead on the news at noon, the man accused of killing three people and injuring another is in court today. What the victims' families are asking for. And later, we're stretching your dollar with wages going up. We'll tell you how you can save money when you are at your favorite restaurant in the district. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Let's begin with a look at your weather. Taking a look outside, gray skies today with chilly temperatures and a little bit of a breeze. Meteorologist Damon Matson joins us now with latest check in the forecast. And Damon, we saw snow, I guess, in the western part of Maryland uh, earlier today. It's not coming our way, I hope. No, Mark, we're not going to see snow all the way here in the district. But I'll tell you what, those conditions out there are not ideal. Again, feeling more like it's early spring at this point, as one of our weather watchers, the Akel family, put it. Feels like we're living in the upper peninsula of Michigan with these conditions. Yeah, light rain. It's been moving through at times. Again, the rainfall totals aren't that impressive, but you get the idea. We continue to see those light rain showers. They've been with us over the last day. Now day plus at this point as we go into the afternoon. And like Mark said, snowfall is not an issue across a large majority of the DMV, but we have blue popping up on the map here. Parts of Garrett County picking up a few inches of snow overnight as along that higher terrain. You have that perfect combination of that upslope wind, cooler temperatures, creating those snow showers and making things more like winter time in the higher terrain. And there's a good look again. This storm system that's producing all of this, it hasn't budged. It continues to spin away over parts of Ontario, throwing precipitation all the way around it, including down to us here in the DMV. So don't expect much of a change to your weather conditions today as compared to what we saw yesterday. A lot of clouds, some light rain showers and temperatures that stay cool. We're barely going to be getting back towards 60 here in the district and pretty much everybody else in the DMV staying in the 50s. So when do we finally break from this pattern? We'll have your full forecast in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Happening now, Joe Louis Esquivel, the man charged with shooting and killing three men and hurting two others, has pled guilty and not criminally responsible in court. The judge approved both pleas in court this morning. Esquivel is now guilty of three counts of first-degree murder, two counts of attempted murder, one count of aggravated assault. As for the plea of not criminally responsible, Esquivel will be sent to Clifton T. Perkins Mental Hospital and will be reevaluated by doctors once a year. The families impacted had a chance to give their personal impact statements. This is also the first time that they saw Escabel in person. I think I'm more worried about to see how he reacts. And I'm, I'm praying that he shows some sort of remorse and shows some sort of like humanity. Well, we will have much more on the story coming up on DC News Now at 5. Well, two Virginia inmates are on the run after escaping from jail. One of them is charged in the murder of a deputy in North Carolina. The Prince Edward County Sheriff's Office says that Alder Martin Sotelo and Bruce Callahan escaped from the Piedmont Regional Jail hours apart on Sunday. Callahan has passed drug convictions. Right now, manhunt is underway for both. Police say that they're using a Virginia State Police helicopter, canine officers, and law enforcement from several agencies in the search. Anyone who sees either is urged to call 911. Developing now a scary scene unfolding in a busy D.C. neighborhood. A man was shot after trying to stop a scooter from being stolen. D.C. News Now's Joseph Omo was at the scene this morning and has the latest. Yeah, good day from the Logan Circle neighborhood here in Northwest Washington, D.C., where the search is still on for three teenage boys who tried to steal a moped on the street right here behind me last night. Things quickly got out of hand when a bystander tried to intervene, stop everything from happening, and ended up getting shot. Take a look at the scene from last night. Popular area here with a lot of restaurants, bars, and foot traffic. Now, the specific streets are 14th and S Street. What we can confirm right now, police say three teens are on a 
scooter. They attempt to jack another scooter, and that's when a witness who was also on a scooter got in the middle and tried to intervene. He was shot, and those three teenagers ran away. Last night on the scene, DC News Now did speak to an eyewitness. He saw everything unfold right in front of him. Why? Because his car was parked on the same street where this all happened. Now, he didn't want to go on cam, but take a listen to what he told our photographer, Anthony Deng. He was on the phone. He called the police on them. He tried to stop them. And then the, those the three kids, they tried to steal the white scooter. And they, one of them uh, shot the guy. And they shot him about, uh, I heard about three, four times. He was shot uh, uh, his stomach. And that eyewitness that we spoke to said that the boys looked to be between 12 and 15 years old. Now, as for that victim who was shot, he was taken to the hospital. When he was transported, he was conscious and breathing, police say. The question now, where are those three suspects? Police say they are still searching for them. Reporting in Northwest D.C., I'm Joseph Omo. D.C. News Now, back to you. Joseph, thank you. We're learning more this afternoon after a man was hit and killed by a tractor trailer. Police say that Maurice Mitchell was hit on Route 50 in Maryland yesterday afternoon. The 42-year-old was actually a suspect in a stabbing in Annapolis that happened earlier the day. Both the crash and the stabbing remain under investigation. Well, Metro's orange and blue plus lines are back open. Those lines were single trafficking after a woman fell on the tracks near the Minnesota Avenue station in southeast. Metro says that it happened around 11 o'clock last night. The woman was rushed to the hospital with serious injuries. And happening today, people who live in Montgomery County will get to voice their opinion on a possible property tax increase. This hearing comes as council continues to review next year's operating budget. DC News Now's Tosin Fakile has a preview. People who live in Montgomery County will get the chance to talk and speak up about this tax increase, which exceeds what's called the constant yield tax rate, which is also known as CYTR. Now, CYTR is the real property tax, and that increase that we're talking about is about 10 cents. And that increase is what some people who live in the county say could be the difference between people being able to afford a home and people being able to stay in their current homes. Now that 10 cent tax rate increase was proposed by County Executive Mark Elridge in early April and was immediately met with some pushback. Elridge said the money would go towards Montgomery County schools. That constant yield tax rate is the tax rate that a jurisdiction would have to impose so it can get the same amount of property tax revenue. Well, right now that rate is zero. 0.67 cents. Now the proposed increase would push the rate above the CYRT and put it at 0.77 cents. Now some organizations and residents have already sent in their statements disapproving this increase. It's a 10% increase for the property tax on top of increases have already been occurred because of uh, housing inflation. Uh, is education important? Absolutely. Um, but how much is necessary and why really hasn't been articulated. That public hearing is scheduled for 1.30 this afternoon. What we want to see is for them to kind of burrow down to the details of what's really going on inside the MCPS budget so they can make a lucid and, and educated uh, judgment as to what funds are necessary. Now, the county will hold budget work sessions throughout this month as part of the process of deliberating the fiscal year 2024 budget, which is what this property tax rate increase is included in. For now, we're in the newsroom. I'm Tosin Fakile for DC News Now. Back to you. Well, DC's tipped restaurant workers are getting a raise, and the move could raise the price of what you pay on the menu. DC News Now's consumer reporter Ben Dennis shows us how consumers can stretch their dollar if prices do increase. That's right. It was last November the D.C. voters passed what was known as Initiative 82, essentially getting rid of the existing minimum wage for workers like uh, restaurant waiters, bartenders, etc. at $5.35 an hour. Well, now that's going up. If restaurant owners do decide to increase menu prices because of this extra expense, good news for consumers stretching their dollar, they can utilize coupons to cut that bill. This year, wages not only increase for tipped workers, but for all minimum wage workers in D.C. Come July, the base rate goes up from $16.10 an hour to $17. Bucks. And for those tipped workers, City Hall says employers must supplement their workers' pay if they didn't earn enough in tips to reach minimum wage. Here are those changes before tipped wages 
wage increases stop in 2027. We're going to see an incremental increase until then. Base pay for tipped workers has now increased from $5.35 to $6 an hour. Come July, add two more bucks, $8 an hour. And the move could be a big deal for over 2,200 restaurants in D.C., the number shared by Washington.org. A restaurant owner and restaurant owners rather as they have these additional expenses accounting for higher wages, it's business consultants and some of them offering free service that can help stretch their dollar to manage those increased expenses. One thing they want to think about is negotiating some of their supplies with their vendors and seeing if they can maybe look for different pricing options, shop around, see if there's some other opportunities to work with other vendors. They may want to think about potentially increasing their prices and maybe having that conversation with their clients and letting them know the reason why. And if higher expenses are Offset to consumers, diners can consider using those coupons. Take Retail Me Not. They're among online outlets promoting discounts and deals. And looking ahead, the Metro Washington Restaurant Week this summer, that's also there to offer steals and deals on meals. Official dates have not yet been announced. However, stay with DC News now as that comes out. And employees and employers with any additional questions, have any need to file a claim, that can be done on the city's employment website their employment services department via that link below at the bottom of your screen ben dennis dc news now